Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show today, the Bank of Canada is walking a tightrope between inflation and recession. Plus, the mood of business is a bit grim. Are we pricing in lean times ahead? And Canada is running out of farm operators. A new report sounds the alarm. That's all ahead. First, for the week that was in business, it's time for the briefs. The Bank of Canada opted to hold rates steady at 4.5% this week and forecast that inflation will drop to 3% by mid-year and back to the bank's 2% target by the end of next year. But Governor Tiff Macklem also signaled the bank will act again if necessary. Inflation is coming down quickly and it's forecast to be about 3% this summer. The economy is expected to grow modestly even as inflation comes down. This is good news, but is not job done. In contrast to our central bank's more upbeat outlook on growth and inflation, the IMF said the risk of a so-called hard landing has risen globally. It worries that inflation is still showing signs of life around the world, raising the prospect of a recession accompanied by rising prices or stagflation. Sleep Country said it will acquire the Canadian operations of mattress firm Casper for just over $20 million. As part of the deal, Sleep Country will get a stake in Casper's global parent company, Sleep Country bought online mattress firm Endy in 2019 for $88.7 million. Sleep Country CEO said it was a matter of the opportunity coming along. There was a, an opportunity in this macro environment to be able to bring in and control this brand for Canadians. And we were very excited and lucky to be able to, to, to get it. Tens of thousands of public sector workers are in a position to strike after voting in favor this week. The Public Service Alliance Workers Union is negotiating on behalf of more than 150,000 workers. Revenue Canada employees had already warned they might strike with the threat of disruption to businesses and individuals this tax season. Canadians are worried about debt and many believe that the worst is yet to come. MNP's quarterly consumer debt index bounced off a record low but showed nearly half were worried about debt and that almost 60% said if rates rise any higher, they will be in financial trouble. There was a dramatic change in forecast from Royal LePage. It now sees Canadian home prices gaining 7.5% by the end of this year over last. Just a few months ago, they expected to see a decline of 2% in the same period. So with both volume of sales and prices gaining in March, the realtor is calling an end to the housing correction. And those are your business briefs. Well, while the Bank of Canada walks a high wire between cooling inflation without killing the economy, it also has to deal with pressures beyond its control. Global, of course, and then very close to home in the form of government spending. Derek Holt is head of Capital Markets Economics at Scotiabank. Derek, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. So I do want to start actually with where you think we're headed, because we did get kind of this dire prediction of the possibility of a global recession from the IMF this week. But a kind of a more rosy view from our own bank saying, you know, they do see inflation moderating to where they want it just over a year's time and that they don't see a terrible recession ahead. Uh, are those discordant views or can they both be right? I think they can both be right because Canada is in a bit of a sweet spot internationally with a number of things working to its advantage. And so, for example, uh, we sell a lot, of the, a lot of the commodities that are operating at elevated prices right now and the world wants them. And so for an open economy that trades a lot and sells a lot of commodities, that's a plus. It's like a backdoor positive imported pay hike to Canadians. Uh, we've also uh, increased immigration rates and so that's going to go all into the housing market. We also have very strong corporate balance sheets, partly as a reflection of all, all those factors. And so overall, I think we have a number of pluses in our favor, including incredibly strong job markets. We definitely have strong job markets. We also recently got a uh, federal budget that uh, was heavier on spending than some would have uh, expected given the situation. Are we worried that government spending will, will fuel inflation or is that spending going to go to affordability and be offset? A bit of both, but I think it's heavily going towards inflation. You know, we've increased annual federal government spending by about $105 billion per year compared to what was the case in the fiscal year just before the pandemic struck. And that's going up to about $170 billion per year more 
five years out from now than what governments were spending before the pandemic. And we know that's contributing to inflation. It probably accounts for at least a percentage point worth of the Bank of Canada's rate hikes, probably more than that. And so that's causing a number of reverberating effects upon the private side of the economy, raising the cost of capital, causing inflation, and also causing some labor scarcity in, the, in this picture. So the labor picture, of course, is one of the most uh, confounding things here. Probably the central bank would like to see a little more softness than it's seeing. Are we headed for a recession where there are no job losses? Is that a thing we can expect to have happen? It's a dicey call, but I, I think there are a number of differences in this labor cycle compared to the past. And so it's possible that we have a little bit more resilient labor market than we've had in past hiking cycles. And so one big difference is we've never had improving supply chains into a tightening cycle. And that gives companies the ability to produce more for the, the segment of their clients that still want to consume more. And they have a choice over whether or not to meet that higher production uh, ability by hiring more workers or by investing more. And I think with the unease toward the state of the global economy, more employers are oriented toward hiring more workers because it's a variable cost. Cost. If things really turn out sour, they can reverse a little bit on a go-forward basis. Not a ton of time, Derek, but we did get this kind of bold reversal from at least one source on where the housing market goes. Do you think, given where we are with rates, that it's possible to kind of say if, if our bank is finished raising rates and we hold here, that you could start to see a bottom uh, in, the, in, the, in the prices of housing? Yes, I've felt that for quite some time now. We are importing basically a new city of Ottawa or city of Edmonton every couple of years through higher immigration <laughs> into a market with no supply and an incredibly strong job market where first time home buyers have been building up down payments. And we've added another stimulus program with the first time buyers incentive program that the federal government introduced. Uh, add it all up, I, I, I think we're poised for a pretty strong housing rebound into the next year. Derek, great to have you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Derek Holt, head of Capital Markets Economics at Scotiabank. Coming up, recessions can be self-fulfilling prophecies if enough of us think it is going to happen. We'll explore after this.